Welcome to the Tokamak Energy Development Facility. We believe that the world can have abundant energy that doesn't harm the planet, so we're working to demonstrate the feasibility of fusion as an energy source. Come and have a look around. Tokamak Energy has been expanding rapidly. Currently we have about 65 employees, which goes up to around 100 if you include consultants and contractors. People work in various teams, such as physics, engineering, design, high temperature superconductors, technicians, all working together to achieve fusion faster. I'm Stephen McNamara, I'm the Physics Programme Manager here at Tokamak Energy and this is SD40. So SD40 is the world's first high field spherical tokamak and it's got a lot of similarities to other tokamaks that have been designed and operated but it also has a few key differences that make it unique. So all tokamaks use a combination of strong magnetic fields to confine a donut shaped plasma and it has a combination of two fields, one from the toroidal field and one from the poloidal field. And one thing that makes SD40 special is that it has a very strong toroidal field. So other spherical tokamaks that have operated around the world have had toroidal fields of around half a tesla, but when fully operational, SD40 will have a toroidal field of up to three tesla, so making it six times more powerful than any other spherical tokamak. And the reason that's important is because lots of studies on those spherical tokamaks have shown that performance scales strongly with toroidal field. So we've recently moved SD40 into our new facility and we're just starting our second phase of operations. So the aim of this phase is to upgrade ST40 and in upgrading it we're adding lots of new systems. Some of these are diagnostics which help us understand what's going on within the plasma and we're also adding new power supplies for some of the poloidal field coils which will allow us to shape the plasma and control it more effectively. And the final upgrade we're making is we're adding a heating neutral beam which will allow us to increase the plasma temperature. The previous aim of SD40 was to hit 15 million degree plasma temperatures and we achieved that in June last year before we moved into our new facility. So our next goal is to achieve plasma temperatures of 100 million degrees, which is hotter than the centre of the sun. And 100 million degrees is important because that's around the temperature where fusion starts to happen. So since moving into the new facility, we've obviously got a lot more space. So it's allowed us to install all of the systems that we had planned for SD40. We've got a new dedicated control room, which is larger, so it can house more of the operational team. Welcome to the SD40 control room. I'm Otto Asunta, senior physicist here at Tsukamak Energy. This is the control room. On the back end, you'll see the, the pilot screens, the four screens over there, where we drive the machine from. And then coming to, to this end, this is where the chief scientist sits. And the rest of the room would normally, when we were operating, be filled with people looking at various diagnostics or subsystems of the, of the device, such as neutral beams. So if you want to come closer, on the right-hand side, we have a video of an SD40 pulse number 6100. And what you see here is the, the visible light radiated by the plasma. On the left-hand side, we have a, the same video, but overlaid with the, with the magnetic reconstruction of the plasma. So we have a couple of hundred magnetic probes in and around the, the vacuum chamber. And we use that data to, to then calculate the, the structure of the magnetic fields. The way ST40 plasmas are created is by using the two in-vessel merging compression coils. So we ramp up the current in those, those two coils and then we ramp it down rapidly, which induces a voltage around them and creates two plasma rings, one around the, the top and one around the bottom coil. As the current in the coils falls down, there's nothing holding those plasma rings to the coil anymore, but instead they see the attraction of each other move to the middle and merge into one, one plasma that then gets pushed into, further into the machine by the, the vertical field coils on the, the low field side. And as a result, we have a tokamak plasma. So there you see the two plasma rings and then one, one tokamak plasma. From the merging compression, we get the initial plasma current. Then we use the, the solenoid. This was one of the first pulses where we were using the solenoid to extend the plasma, to move from, from the plasmas that we, we see here into to plasmas with fusion conditions, we would need more auxiliary heating and we'd, we'd need to be able to extend the plasmas even, even longer and ramp up the plasma current. So that's the purpose of the solenoid and, as well as the neutral beams that we are, we are currently installing. To go to longer plasmas we'd need superconducting magnets which is why we have a team here at Tokamak Energy working on developing them. This is the High Temperature Superconductor Laboratory, where the team are developing HTS magnets. These magnets are an integral part of our plan to build a tokamak capable of producing commercial fusion power. Over the past 12 months, we've put in a lot of work that has allowed us to turn this stuff, HTS tape, into this, a HTS magnet. 
we've made some great steps in order to develop easy to assemble, scalable and robust magnet technology. The reason we've been making these coils is in order to test the quality of the tape that's inside them. We've manufactured six what we call QA coils, quality assessment coils, in order to assess the quality from six suppliers across the world. And that's what one of these coils is. So this is, this is a, what we call a double pancake coil. So it's got two of these coils inside it. And we test these in our in-house HDS magnet test facility. We've been blown away by the performance of these coils and in particular their stability. So we found that they're able to be operated at thousands of amps beyond their usual current capacity. And that's really because high temperature superconducting wires are stable operating in this dynamic environment. And also the design of the coils really lends itself to this kind of stability. We've now scaled the technology up way beyond QA coil size and we've built this magnet here. So this is a magnet that contains more like a kilometer of HDS tape and operating at 20 Kelvin, this magnet has produced a central field strength of well in excess of 20 Tesla, which we believe to be a world first for a magnet of this kind. This is a crucial milestone for Tokamak Energy because what this proves is the ability for high temperature superconducting materials to produce the intense fields required for fusion energy. We hope you've enjoyed your visit to Tokamak Energy. Find out more on our website or follow our progress on our YouTube channel and social media. Thank you for joining us.